Hello, so today we're going to be going over a fortune game. <laughs> uh, well, it's not actually fortune. What it's going to be is um, they kind of don't have an econ augment this set. So this is set 12 PBE. So I'm trying to practice and get ready for when set 12 releases so that I kind of have a little bit of an informed start. Uh, if you like this content, make sure to like and subscribe. I'm trying to reach some subs a subscriber goal, so it'd be really nice um, to have some support. Um, if you do like this content. So basically what I'm going to be playing this game is the new fortune trait. Um, if you know from set 11, but typically they're just called econ traits or loss traits. Basically it's like you lose a bunch of rounds, you gain some sort of cash out, and then that cash out helps you to stabilize and win. Uh, typically those traits or those type of augments are very strong because being up resources is usually very, very good in TFT. And, you know, if you can, like, force yourself into a high roll position, right, if you can lose, which is pretty easy to just make your board weak and lose, um, then you can easily guarantee yourself a spot where you have um, a lot of resources late game, and so long as you have a good stabilized board, you'll be able to win out a lot of the time. And that that's usually how these traits and augments kind of work. Uh, now there's no trait. There's no specific, like, fortune trait in the set. There is no... Um, like Piltover, there's no Heart Steel, right? If uh, those were the other sets that I've played. Um, instead, there's just um, you can get it via Augment. Now, getting it uh, from the Augment is actually pretty cool because one of the biggest problems with the traits was that you can get griefed by people. I guess now you can still get griefed, but basically, like, you can full sell your whole board uh, and still uh, sack the rounds. But we'll basically we'll see the Augment, uh, we'll talk about it, and I'll give my general game plan. So, I already played Zap Attack, so I don't want to play it again, obviously. Uh, Replication seems like it's okay, but I, I'm not really too interested in it right now. I'm looking around to see. Maybe I play another Zap Attack game. I think this was before I uploaded it, so I was thinking maybe I can make a better video. Uh, but then ultimately, I decided not to. Uh, we roll through them. Encanter Crest. I, I tried out the Encanter, and this is what I was talking about. Fortune favors the bold. Winning combat against a player will grant you... Oops, sorry, my thing's too... Spe will grant you bonus orbs. The longer your loss streak, the, big, the greater the payout. So the idea is, is that you want to have a large loss streak with this augment and having a large loss streak, then you get a cash out, use that cash out to win out, right? That's the idea here. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to econ max, right? I'm trying to make 20 gold um, because I'm going to lose anyways. So I'm going to play some units. I know Elise is pretty tanky and pretty strong. Uh, so I sell all of my two cost units and my upgraded units to make 20 gold. And I'm just going to try my best to be as strong as possible. Um while still losing every single round and i want to lose as many rounds as i humanly can right as many rounds as i think are necessary typically whenever you're playing an econ trait if you've never played an econ trait before you always want to cash out with two lives right um there's a lot of fight rng in tft uh basically when i say two lives that means that you have to have enough hp typically two lives around 20 hp you want to have enough hp that you can take a loss and not just go eighth right that usually guarantees your top four because very rarely is there going to be out of eight people, two people that are tremendously stronger than you, right? A lot of times when you cash out, you want two lives for multiple reasons. Number one, you want it in case there's somebody that's just high rolled and you don't want to just get like accidentally RNG, like your your carry gets like one shot or killed and then you just lose the game. Um, and you don't want to run into a situation where you, um, you are middle, middle of cash out and you get a bit dizzy and then you mess up your cash out round. And then you just lose because you messed up your cash out round. So that's why you usually want to aim to cash out with two lives. So for me, it's like um, the thing with um, this augment that's really cool. Uh, that will probably make it very strong. Is that you can pick when you get a cash out, right? It's the same as heart steel. And it's the same as, um, what's it called? As Piltover, right? Fortune wasn't like that. Fortune was like, you will get a cash out in X amount of turns by die roll. Which made it a lot more difficult to play around. It's a lot easier to play around this because it's like when you win a round, you get your cash out. So you can decide, okay, I'm going to all in this round to win the next round to win the game, right? That's the idea. So basically what I'm looking for is as soon as I'm 20 HP or around 20 HP, I'm going to cash out, right? We're going to try and take this as long as we can. We're going to try and lose as many rounds in a row as possible. And when we're approximately 20 HP, we're going to try and cash out. That's the idea. So I'm looking around, I'm trying to think what could I cash out into. Um, usually when you cash out into these boards, a lot of times it helps to cash out into specific um, specific boards, right? Uh, because this augment is just whatever, 
uh, you you it, it also makes it very flexible, right? A lot of times there was like a specific line. So for example, with Fortune, a lot of times last set if you played Fortune, you would cash out into Kaisa. And the reason was it was because there was a lot of shared units and it was an easy transition to go from Fortune to Kaisa because you can leave in the Kabuko to help your bruiser front line until you were able to replace him. And you can leave in your uh, Tebow because he would then uh, be a really strong unit in the Kaisa board being a trick shot, right? I'm talking about last set. With Hard Steel, you would cash it around Ezreal, and with Piltover, which was like two sets ago, so maybe it's a bit dated, it was always a uh, cash out into Zaun, Gunner, Zeri, right? Because you were playing Piltover with uh, uh, playing around the Jace, which was the Gunner. Here, you can play around anything, right? That's the idea. Um, so I can cash out into any units. I just have to try and like establish a good board. Here, I'm just putting in the five cost. I'm trying to decide... Um, this was when I was playing live, by the way. If you ever want to uh, catch me live, I play on my Twitch channel, which is in the description below, usually in the videos. Um, but I was playing it live, and I'm just kind of talking to chat, saying, okay, what can we actually cash out into? Here, what I'm thinking of is nobody's really going Sugarcraft. I'm kind of down to play Sugarcraft, because Sugarcraft doesn't care if I win or I lose. And Sugarcraft, the way that it works, it works kind of like... Um, uh, similar to like, I, I think the best example would be like, um, 8-bit, because with, or, um, I guess, uh, what's it called, Kindred Gnar, like Dryads. The idea is that, like, every turn, if you slam components, right, um, these Sugarcraft units, I'm not putting it in because I'm scared that I might win around, uh, because there's one guy that's like full sacking as well, which you'll see, uh, I'll, I'll highlight it a bit later. So it makes my, my job a little bit difficult. It's always bad when there's like one other person in the lobby that is just like, you know, contesting your loss streak because, you know, you just run into a situation. But basically with Sugarcraft, uh, the way Sugarcraft works is your, your units gain uh, AP and AD based on cake layers that are made. And these cake layers are made based on the amount of components that you slam on your units, right? So it doesn't fit really well with this particular augment just because I don't want to slam too many components because I don't want to be too strong. But at a certain point, um, what I'm hoping is that I'll be able to scale up Sugarcraft because it doesn't matter if I win or I lose the round, I will still slowly progressively make these units stronger, which then if I cash out into when I have my cash out round, I'll at least have like a very strong Jinx and a very strong Bard, a very strong Soraka and a very strong Gwen because the Sugarcraft augment will give them a lot of uh, AP and AD, right? So that's my, my, uh, my, uh, my idea. The only reason I don't have Sugarcraft in, I should have it in now to try and, um, to try and uh, stabilize a little bit better. The problem is there's this guy over here that is uh, contesting the loss streak. I think he's trying to play like Casio reroll. And he was like full sacking in terms of his positioning. So I was scared that if I put in Bard and I put in Jinx and I slammed a bunch of items on them, I would lose, right? Now I have less of that fear, obviously, because uh, we made our five loss streak. Like I said, I want to try and get the best cash out that I can. Also, I want to get like a reasonable cash out, right? I'm losing a lot of HP because the boards are very strong, right? I'm losing by a lot of units. Um, so ideally, and here's the sugar craft, see? So I have no cake layers to start. And then as you get stacks with your components, it goes up and up and up. Uh, but the idea here is that um, I think that I can cash out into Sugarcraft pretty well. I will say this, this, I'll talk about it a bit later. I've played this fortune line twice I, I just call it fortune because called fortune favors the bold uh but i've played this uh augment twice now uh one time i which is this one uh we'll see how it goes but it goes really well i won't spoil it because it's pretty exciting um but the other time i played it i think i went like fifth or something and i think it was just like um like the sugar craft line is a little bit more risky especially if you don't have it from the start um and especially if it's contested like if someone else is playing towards gwen uh, and you don't find a Gwen early, it, it runs into some severe problems. Uh, but I'm not super committed Sugarcraft. Uh, the reason I'm not super committed Sugarcraft here is because I didn't get my, um, I didn't get it on stage two, right? At stage three, ideally, um, there wasn't another guy sacking and I could have easily played towards this. Bard is really tanky, um, and that's my problem and he does a lot of damage. So if someone's like full sacking with me and I put in Bard with slammed item components, it sometimes turns into an awkward situation. I think this guy's still lose streaking. So I'm waiting one more turn because he's probably, he's going to have to send it, right? He's not playing like a fortune augment. So I'm just kind of outwait, uh, outwait until this guy rolls a little bit in order to hit some upgrades because then I'll be like uncontested loss streak basically. As we can see here, this is why I mean Bard already killed a unit, very strong. 
Um, I have a Gwinsu, which is pretty nice, and I have a frontline item. I'm probably just going to play... I I'm not getting any sugar craft in yet, right? It's still a problem, um, obviously. Uh, so then we're just going to, like, send it here. Uh, I'm kind of thinking to myself, I don't really want to play sugar craft that much because I haven't been stacking it for much of this game. So it's a little bit awkward. Um, here I'm just looking for anything. I see branching out, so I'm like, oh, bet. I'll just take branching out, and whatever uh, trade I get is the one that I'll play. And what do you know, I got a sugar craft emblem, right? So I think this sugar craft line only really works if you hit like an, a sugar craft emblem for your cash out, because now I'm, I'm basically for sugar craft. Uh, I checked, this guy rolled a little bit, so now I should be strong enough. Um, I'm trying to think who do I put in. Uh, we're going to put in Jinx. I'm going to sell this because he was upgraded, right? So I just want to make my board a little bit weaker, make sure I lose. Play only one frontline unit because whatever. Uh, slam the Gwinsu, and I'll start slamming some components, right? I'm going to put Gargoyle on this guy. And I should probably just put also tier on this guy just to make sure that I get as much sugar craft uh, stacking as I can. But yeah, four sugar craft early. Uh, the stacks are going to make up for the previous stacks that I lost, basically, right? A lot of times you're stuck not being able to hit four sugar craft because it's hard to find the Gwen, right? And, you know, or it's hard to find both Jinx and Bard. The other unit you can play is Rumble. Um, but yeah, these are the five sugar craft units. But obviously, if you get four sugar craft in pretty early, it's pretty good. Uh, my health is a little bit scary. I'm 48 H HP, right? Remember what I said? Around 20, around 20 HP is when we want to do our cash out. So, you know, um, we're going to try and go as long as possible. Obviously, excuse me, I couldn't optimize my board, right, to play. Um, how do I phrase it? I couldn't optimize myself to uh, lose by very few units in a lot of these early fights. And a lot of the reason behind that is that... Um, there were people sacking, right? There were people that were like full on just like lose streaking, making it very difficult for me to uh, to lose those rounds in a more convincing way. Uh, I'm frontlining some of my units because now I have I basically leveled up to seven. I put a lot of frontline units and I gave uh, Jinx the Gwinsu. The idea behind this is that I don't really want to do like a bunch of damage and accidentally win. I'd rather these dudes get picked off, make Jinx stack the Gwinsu, and hopefully Jinx can like kill a couple units before getting overwhelmed, right? I'm trying to, like, uh, balance my damage output so that I'm not super, um, what's it called? I'm not super, uh, strong, if that makes sense. So, this kind of sucks. Again, we're at 39 HP, right? Ideally, we lose two more rounds, and then I'm around 20 HP. That's the idea. And then I'm going to go for a 4-1 cash out, right? Because 4-1, I get Augment. It's going to be a really busy round, but it seems like it fits really nicely in the tempo, right? When everybody else is rolling and spiking their board, I'll also roll and spike my board. Uh, but typically, I would, if I were uh, playing this and I had like a little bit more HP, I would typically aim for like a 4-3 cash out, right? Uh, something like a 4-3. Um, just because like a lot of times when you go for the 4-2 cash out, you get your Augment. There's a lot of things going on. It makes the transition round very difficult. A lot of times I'll either go for like a 4-1 uh, or a 4-3. Just to avoid the 4-2 to give myself a little bit of time to work with. Um, but, you know, if your APM is good and you, you know what you're doing, then you can obviously just go for the the other one. Uh, what's this? Oh, it was gain a random spat. Yeah, yeah I was kind of down for that. That actually helps my power level by a lot. Yeah, random uncraftable emblem. Because I have so much money... Um, I'm, I'm like, I can afford to take this. Uh, now I get a Hunter Emblem, which is really good for Jinx. So whenever you're playing, uh, Sugarcraft, if you're playing Vertical Sugarcraft like this, sh Six Sugarcraft is always the way to go. I don't think you ever take an Emblem and play Four Sugarcraft. I think if you have an Emblem, you always play Six Sugarcraft if you can. Um, I always like to establish myself a dual carry, either in the form of Jinx Gwen or Bard Gwen. Gwen's really easy to carry because, um... She's a 4 cost, and if you get her upgraded, she does a lot of damage. And she also works as a frontline unit, which is what this board typically lacks. Um, this is the board I kind of wanted to go for. I always like to put in Preserver. I don't know if it's going to get nerfed right before release, but Preserver is insanely strong. So basically, we're just going to always play Preserver on this line. Um, just to help with the front line, I'm going to play a Vanguard. So the best Vanguard that I can think of is Tom Kench, because he's a uh, 4 cost. And I'm probably going to roll on level 8 odds. And then I'm trying to think what warrior to play to support Gwen. Um, so in this case, this guy's a fairy, right? Um, so I would prefer to have the fairy synergy. So instead of Fiora, 
which Fiora works really well because she's a 4 cost, so efficient rolling for 4 cost, you just roll for like 3 4 cost, it makes it a little bit easier to hit them um, when you're rolling for multiple of the same unit. Instead, I might end up playing Katarina, right? That's the only difference between my team plan and my actual board because then I gain the uh, the fairy item that I can put on Rakan and I can stabilize around that. Uh, there's somebody that looked kind of weak, so I sold to not make the Hunter Emblem. I'm not sure how strong this guy is. Now, I think this board, I tried it out, and there is a variation of this board. I used to have a lot of problems with Cassiopeia. I still don't think this line is very, very strong. I think that um, the Cassiopeia, it, like, how do I phrase it? The line is fake strong because it seems like it's a Cassio reroll, but I feel like if you hit all the units besides the Cassiopeia, that's how your board is really strong. Because there's like this shapeshifter preserver board now that you can probably find online. I'll talk about it in a, in a video later this week that I'll probably post. Because I ended up trying it out and somebody else tried it out as well. And I think that like if you hit like like Swain 3, Nico 3 is such a strong front line. That if you can build a board around those units with preservers. Because they're they're both shapeshifters and they have a lot of HP. If you get preserver in with, with uh, Swain, Nico. You are so incredibly strong that I think it makes up for the fact that Cassio kind of sucks. Now, I think Cassio sucks. Maybe that's just me. Maybe she got buffed and she's like a little bit better now. I played her recently and I got a top four, but it, it didn't feel like she never feels super stable. And she feels really like she needs very particular items, right? If that makes sense. Uh, but anyways, let's look at my HP real fast. So it's 4-1. Uh, I'm sending it this turn. I think I'm around 20 HP. Sorry that I have this Soraka over the HP. Uh, but yeah, we just finished neutrals. I'm trying to send it. I'm trying to roll for all the units that I want. And I'm trying to win this round so I can get my cash out, right? Uh, we really need to get this cash out. I put the Sugarcraft Emblem on the, um, the Katarina because I don't think Rakan does that much damage. I'd rather just put triple tank item on Rakan. Um, as you can see, I didn't hit a Gwen. So I don't get the, the six Sugarcraft buff, which is pretty bad. Uh, I'm just trying to think of what items to make here. Uh, Giant Slayer seems fine. And we're hoping to win this, but I don't think we will. Because I didn't even find Jinx too, right? I found like no Jinxes. I think somebody else is playing uh, Sugarcraft maybe. I forget which game this was because I played multiple. Uh, but as you can see, we're around 20 HP. I think I was like a little bit under 20. Now I'm 8 HP on one life. This is the exact situation I say that you usually want to avoid. Um, but, you know, I think if I, I oh, I got a Gwen because champion delivery. Oh my gosh, I, I completely, I remember this game now. Okay, so, I didn't find a Gwen, but I got dropped a Gwen. Oops, I skipped something. Where am I? I'm somewhere, sorry about that. Uh, we are right around here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so now I was able to put in the Gwen. This is the turn right after. Sorry, I skipped around a little bit. I think I got dropped the Gwen because I forgot that the portal is champion delivery. So I don't remember finding the Gwen, but I, I ended up being able to play her. So this is my board. Six Sugarcraft, uh, two Preserver, two Hunter, two Vanguard, two Warrior, right? I'm pretty sure this is like one of the best cash out lines. Just because I, I, I personally like having the Fairy Emblem um, to play on. Like I think on a... It, like in a max cap board if you can fit in Morgana as an extra preserver then you want to have Fiora because the fairy excuse me the fairy item doesn't matter as much uh, but now we win our round so let's see what our cash out is right our cash out is a bunch of gold orbs so we got like what like 70 gold and a radiant item uh, that's basically what the cash out was so 70 gold and a radiant item was a uh, 11 turn loss streak right it's not bad, but I was expecting a little bit more, to be honest. Um, as you can see here, I'm just burning through all my gold to try and find an upgrade. And I don't even find anything. <laughs> I found Tom Kench too. Now, Tom Kench is pretty tanky, so this actually works really well. The Radiant D-Claw does help a lot. Um, but I would have ideally liked like a Gwen item, to be honest. But it is what it is. I have a Reforger, but Radiant D-Claw is good enough. Because a lot of the lobby does do AP damage. Um, so I'm down to just... Giga Juice my Tom Kench and make sure Tom Kench lives as long as possible. And as you can see, uh, we're fairly stable now. I wouldn't say this is like a win out cash out though, right? Um, it was a little bit awkward. Now I tried this again and I think I had, um, this was an 11 turn. I think with a, uh, I think it was 8 turn. With an 8 turn cash out, all I got was a Radiant item. 
So I didn't get a, I didn't get the gold. I just got the radiant item with like an eight turn. I'm not sure exactly what the cash outs are, um, but I'm sure when the set gets released fully to the public, there will be a similar to Fortune. There'll be online resources that you can look up uh, what all the cash outs are, which will help you gauge exactly what cash out you want to get. Right. But what I will always suggest is you play around being able to cash out with two lives left, right? Now I only have one life. I basically have to win every single round starting from this point. My sugar craft isn't fully stacked either, which is a little bit scary. And I really need to get this Gwen 2 online. Uh, here, I, this is what I mean. Uh, now I'm going to play the Katarina. Uh, I'm fairy crowning the Rakan just because, like, you know, I need to fairy crown somebody. Having the Hunter Emblem helps a lot because it establishes my dual carry of Jinx really well. Um, a lot of times you can't rely too much on Jinx in these situations without the extra um, stats. I'm just donkey rolling for Gwen here. Um, it, it's not really possible for me to um, to stall out to... Um, or Sorry, I already hit Gwen. What am I rolling for then? Oh, I'm rolling for Rakan. I, I guess I'm just so scared. I really want Rakan too. And then I'll, and then I'll go level 9. But I can probably sit here now because I already hit the Gwen. Before it was, it made sense to roll because I was rolling for both Rakan and Gwen. But now that I have Gwen already, it's fine. Uh, Gwen scales off her casting, so I think blue buff is really strong on Gwen. Um, I don't know if she necessarily needs a healing item because she gets some Omnivam from Warrior. So as long as you have like really good damaging items on her, I think she might be okay without a healing item. Uh, but like you know, I think a lot of builds like they vary in terms of like what what exactly your best items are. Uh, we'll definitely figure that out when the set's released and there's more stats available. I think we can deduce it a little bit better. Uh, personally, when I look at Gwen, I think blue buff is just like... When I read her ability and I read how she operates, in my head, I just think blue buff, right? I think feast or famine, uh, get, get stack up a bunch of snips by doing a bunch of casts. I think blue buff is really strong. I have the giant slayer on her just because that's what I, that's what I could make. And... Yeah, we'll see how far and how close some of these fights are. I think as soon as I hit Rakan too, because Rakan is a very, very good tank. Um, in my opinion, I feel like every time I put him in, he, he lives for a very long period of time. I'm kind of down. But we'll see these fights. Uh, they're not looking close right now, but I am a lot more ahead than everybody else. The Radiant item helped a lot. The gold helped a lot. But also the fact that I'm Sugarcraft. My units aren't even at max cap of their own strength yet. I think I have one more cake layer to build. Uh, the way that Sugarcraft works is as you stack those cake layers, they gain uh, more AP and more AD. Uh, 3 item Jinx would be really big. Also, if I hit Jinx 3, that would also be huge. I should be holding on to Morgana here. Uh, because Morgana is another preserver and she'll probably be played in as my next in. Right? Having the Morgana now, I can probably focus on leveling to um, level uh, 9. Right? Then I can also drop this for Fiora. Right, Fiora probably does a little bit more damage, a little bit tankier for the front line. Uh, yeah, and I, I just, I forget to buy Morgana, that's my bad. Uh, last Gwen item, I'm thinking just Gunblade on Gwen, probably, yeah. And then I could just make, uh, I could just reforge one of these and see. I get the Rakan too, just natural in the shop, so we love to see that. Um, in terms of my items, I don't have like Shred or Anti-Heal or anything, so I make Sunfire to give some Anti-Heal. Tom Kent does like the little splash damage as well, so it's pretty good. Um, I'm placing, by the way, I didn't mention it before, but I'm, I'm solo frontlining Tom Kench because I have Gargoyles on him, as well as D-Claw, so I feel like he can full tank everything. I don't want to spread out my other units in the front line because I don't want them to get aggroed first, right? Especially Gwen. I want Gwen to kind of go as long as possible without getting any damage put on her, basically. Right? So here, for example, this Cassiopeia is going to get stuck on the Tom Kench. I have Radiant D-Claw. There's no way this board's ever going to beat me. Um, Pandora's Benj trying to roll for, for I don't know what. Because uh, he's re-rolling a Swain. But I guess he's not playing like the whole um, Preserver Cassio line at this point. But yeah, there's just like no way that it, I, I lose to that board. Um, yeah, and then this is this is what the 8-bit kind of portion of it is, right? After you get your 7 stacks of the um, Sugar Craft, every couple rounds, uh, and whenever you hit your max threshold, you basically get uh, some kind of cash out, right? It's going to be gold, right? For example, there it was gold plus component, right? And this is what I mean. This is what helps secure my first, right? Uh, or, sorry, I don't want to spoil it. This is what helps me secure this game. Because um, what ends up happening 
um, is what, what ends up happening with sugar craft. That's why six sugar craft is really good. If you get into a position where you're stable and you're getting these cash outs, you're just going to slowly get more and more resources ahead of your opponent, right? I'm going to slowly get more and more components, more and more gold, because I'm going to constantly be getting these cash outs. And that's where it converts this comp, which might not look particularly strong into like top one, top two, like very easily, right? And this is what I was kind of going for. I wanted to... Like, I'm, I'm a little bit more comfortable with Sugarcraft because I've been trying it out a lot. I love these, like, infinite scaling ones. I don't know where my tactician went. He kind of just disappeared. Uh, but yeah, of course, this is PBE. They might nerf Sugarcraft and nerf some of these lines. Uh, as well as the uh, the fortune favors the bolt augment in general. So just be wary of this, right? Be cognizant that something like this might not be as strong as it is later. Uh, oh, there's the other player that was playing Gwen. Okay, that's why it was so hard for me to hit. Uh, but yeah, obviously I still have room to to strengthen my board. If I hit um, Jinx three, uh, that that's in, that's insanely strong. As having a dual carry, Bard three with some items would be really strong. I already have like a decent amount of front line. Tom Kench, I feel like people have been sleeping on Tom Kench. Like I, I don't know if it's just the Radiant D Claw. I think Radiant D Claw obviously helps a lot here, but I feel like this Tom Kench is extremely tanky for what it's worth, right? Uh, this board would be really strong. Vex 3 uh, with the mages and mage, emblo mage uh, plus 1. Uh, or sorry, mage uh, augment. It would be insanely strong. Here, I'm looking for maybe like a frontline item. I'm down for like some shred. So I can take spark, sure. Uh, I signed the component on the jinx because I'm expecting to get a cash out where I can maybe get another component. But yeah, we're, we're trying to like itemize everybody a little bit well. I think Gunblade also helps with the sustained healing a little bit. I don't know if Gunblade's super good on Gwen, but I definitely think blue buff is. Uh, but yeah, we get another cash out. As you can see, it's a little bit better than the last one. This time we get a component and a golden, uh, golden remover. So golden remover helps because I can fix some itemizations. I really like it when you have one on bench. I have two reforgers, so I can also like maybe try and gambit into like a better position. Uh, but basically, yeah, I didn't hold the Morgana. I just leveled a 7 here, or level a 9, sorry, because I have the ability to. What I really need to do, though, is I really need to put in um, Morgana. I should have held on to her from before. Remember, I missed. I didn't click her, but that's just my bad. Uh, this this round's a little bit scary, because Ezreal 3 can just, like, one-shot a bunch of units, especially with an IE. So I'm always scared about those things. As you can see, it's it's a little bit close kind of like my Gwen's already dead but yeah I, I guess I guess I just swarmed him he didn't have as much of a front line he's still level seven right so I guess a very low roll game for this guy unfortunately uh, but yeah we're, we're winning out this is what usually happens right it's like being up the resources not only the uh like I felt like I didn't even high roll the Gwen like it took me a really long time to find Gwen too because I got like 70 gold as a cash out or close to 70 gold as a cash out and I just didn't hit Gwen to very easily. I rolled down all my gold and it was very difficult for me to hit everything. But of course, this is like, you know, that's with a grain of salt, obviously. Now that my Rakan's upgrade, I also don't feel like dropping to Fiora, right? Because I don't think Witchcraft matters that much. I'd rather just keep the extra item on the Rakan. Because this Rakan is kind of a demon. Uh, I remember some of these fights are a little bit closer, but I don't know who it's going to be close against, but we'll see. One-off Jinx as well. I'm holding these Gwens because maybe we just have a fun game, right? Where we hit, like, you know, Giga Gwen. You know, I'm kind of down, right? Uh, we're still stacking the Sugar Crafts. So we're going to get another cash out very soon, right? Uh, 1,325 uh, is another cash out. Uh, I hit uh, hit uh, Jinx 3. I don't know why I'm rolling so aggressively here. I don't know what I'm rolling for. Am I just rolling for Morgana? I guess I'm just trying to secure the win. Roll on neutrals instead. Make sure that I get my Giga win. Still make 10. I should have probably waited a little bit. I could even go 10 this game. Right? If I feel like I'm stable enough. Obviously I'm 1 life so it's always a little bit risky. Uh, I have anti-heal already, so I don't really need red buff. But I think it's just a better... Like, I have Bard 3, so I might as well just put it on. Now, Bard is extremely tanky, I find. I find, like, Bard is so hard to kill a lot of the time. 
I think it's because he's Preserver, and Preservers get double the healing from the Preserver trait. Oh, I put in this guy for Arcana. I also have Briar 2 option. It's Morgana for sure. I have more Morgana right there. But I guess I just want the extra HP from this guy. Yeah, I actually get a lot of value, right? The way it works is kind of like Jazz. You gain extra HP for every trait you have active. And if you look, I do have quite a few traits active. So it's it's actually it's actually pretty good value. It's, it might be better than Preserver. Just have the extra HP. So I'm positioning the Bard in front of the Jinx. Just because if, if something goes wrong and I start to lose, I want the Bard to tank for the Jinx. Because I think the Bard's a lot tankier than Jinx. At least that's my thought process. Uh, sell some units. I don't know if 3 Preserver is better or if the Arcana is better on Tom Kench. I'd have to do the math, but I'm too it's too difficult to do just off my head. Uh, we get a cash out. This cash out is a full item and a golden duplicator. Yay! So I just have to make uh, I'm gonna reforge. I make uh gunblit or I make this, I'm gonna reforge again. I make bloodthirster, you know it is what it is. I'll just put on a frontline unit, just help them out. I was really looking for some kind of backline item. I was hoping to get like a bard item. I was reforging and keeping one sword because I can make Shojin, I can make Gunblade, I can make uh, Giant Slayer. Right, there's a couple options there. Uh, now I have this Golden Duplicator. We'll see what, if we can make use of it at one point. Uh, this is the Casio board, except it looks a little bit less optimized than I would think to play it. I think the Preserver line of it is a lot stronger. Uh, but yeah, I don't think this Casio board ever beats me. Especially with Radiant d -claw, it's like almost like a hard counter. Because the Casio is just going to get stuck on the Tom Kench for the whole fight. While I just rip through the rest of the board right it's a very very difficult you can't even position around it because i'm solo frontlining the tom kench so no matter where you put the Cassio, she's always going to target tom kench first and i don't think she has enough burst uh here we're just going to roll we're going to roll as much as we can and yeah we just hit gwen three uh gg game's balanced i don't know I'm playing against the mage player, but you know, he doesn't know the reckoning that's in place here. So sad, because I probably would have hit another cash out this round as well, if I uh, was able to lose one more. Yeah, let's go Gwen. I actually like Gwen as a unit a lot as well, so it's really cool. Because Gwen was one of my favorite units in set 9. So I'm really happy that she's back, and yeah, it's just a first, GG. Uh, but what are the takeaways from this? Obviously, this was a little bit high roll because I was able to play six sugar craft. I think that uh, this fortune augment is good. I think it's very strong. I think obviously I'm very bad at some of these traits, right? I feel like I'm not very good at rolling on the fly and like putting in units. That's something I have to practice a lot, which is what I'm trying to practice a little bit in PVE. Put myself in positions where I have to roll a lot in a singular round and try and hit everything, but. Um, this is like a really strong sugar craft board. I think even without the radiant item, I definitely would be very strong. Some of the fights would be a lot closer because my Tom Kench would die a lot earlier. But obviously, radiant item just helps out a bunch. Um, it's what pushes you over the edge in terms of playing for that first position, right? It's this this augment. Obviously, if you go for like a giga cash out, it runs into a very first or eighth pos uh, situation, right? Like for example, if I just didn't hit Tom Kench two and I didn't hit Gwen two ever then there's a very good chance I just go 8th, right? Because some of those fights, if they just chew through the Tom Kench first, you know, maybe the rest of my board can't support it. Whenever you're playing Sugarcraft, though, I think your stabilization point is obviously hitting one of Bard 3 or Jinx 3. Especially if you're playing 6 Sugarcraft. They both gain so many stats um, that having one of them upgraded, a lot of times it ends up being Bard just by nature of... Um, or a lot of times it ends up being Jinx just by nature of Bard being more contested. But both these units can utilize their stats really, really well. And it can push you to like that really, really strong um, dual carry type of situation. Because they're both going to gain so much from the sugar crap trait that it makes it very worthwhile to upgrade either of them. Um, but anyways, that was the new fortune style augment. Uh, make sure to try it out. It's very good. And I uh, had a lot of fun playing it. So obviously... Um, make sure to like and subscribe if you like this content and hopefully that was somewhat informative and gives you like an idea of a route to play uh, but obviously because you can play any route with it you can kind of build your board and your augments around any of your favorite comms and then just try and play it to a win out position uh, thank you for watching and have a great day